How often do players warm up? Perhaps 100 times a year? Maybe 300 if you're a pro. But do they just go through the motions? We all know that keeping players on the park is critical both to performance and participation, so a warm-up is standard practice. But Angela Jackson, who is a chartered physiotherapist, has strong views about what constitutes the right kind of warm-up and indeed believes that what many do is a complete waste of time. So we went to Toff CC in Cheshire to hear her thoughts firsthand and to see her in action with a group of young cricketers. We want to go one to two, to three, to four. So just watch, nice and athletic. Okay, off we go, everybody. Excellent. I'm a physiotherapist and I have been working with Cheshire Cricket since uh, some of the boys that we've got today were under 10. And when we first took them on tour, it became apparent that they were really, really talented, but basically they, they didn't have much in the way of sort of movement skills, strength and conditioning. And we actually screened them all and worked out that a lot of them had by even at the age of nine and 10, they'd actually lost half of their mobility in their bowling arm. And so their rotation had got lost and we began to get quite concerned as to what implications that might have for the long term. So in conjunction with the Emerging Player programme that started at the time, I was asked to volunteer for Cheshire and I've done so ever since working with all of the Cheshire cricketers, but primarily the emerging players in the academy, trying to get our injury prevention down. OK, start to think about doing some of the movements that we're going to need when we start playing cricket. So we're going to go round the circle to begin with. We're all going to go the same direction, doing some high knees, then we'll do some heel flicks. I'll shout them out as we go. When I yell stop, you have to go and get a ball, run as quickly back to any cone, put the ball on it, and then carry on running round. Got to remember where the ball is. Good, really nice heel flicks. Keep those hips nice and open. Stop! Okay, jogging it round again. And side steps facing the middle. Okay, nice high skips, arms really pumping. Nice straight arms as though you're ready to bowl. Right up, James, arms straight. That's better. Stop. Grab a ball. Good. My background was that I got injured as a child, so for 30 odd years now I've been working at trying to prevent injuries. Inherently I was sat there watching and noticed that I'm a running coach, they weren't running correctly, they didn't know how to squat or lunge. When they were bowling their just general strength and conditioning wasn't adequate and so we kind of felt that we needed to get these kids fit and teach them how to move in order to make them better cricketers. For most of the growing children, because their skeletal growth starts in the bones and consequently the muscles and the nerves all get really, really tight. So in certainly the growing athlete, I think you've got to spend some time doing both dynamic and static stretches. So we tend to do the dynamic in the warm up and the static after they've played. So that's our long arm plank. And what I'll do is I'll come behind you and just make sure that I can put your bat down the back of each of you. So all into that position for me. So onto your long arm, Jack. So straight arms, hands underneath, shoulders so you don't get sore shoulders. And then nice straight position. Head up, head up, good. So that's that position we're looking for. Down the line we go. Back nice and straight, James, good. Okay. Edward looking at the floor, so nice straight lines. So just pull your middle in there, Daniel. Excellent. Other sports I'd worked in, such as tennis, were massively further ahead in terms of the fact that they did all their warm-ups included all the movements that the kids needed for the sport they were about to play. They were all generally having some strength and conditioning sessions on top of their tennis sessions. So it was just something that I became conscious that for the amount of cricket that they were playing, and particularly as a mother of a 10-year-old who spent his entire life trying to get to be a better bowler in the nets, that there must be something there to try and actually develop them. Okay, so what I want you to do is your W's for me. So just go into that narrow position and out into your W's. Good, nice and low, excellent. So part of my uh, voluntary role is to make sure that all the cricket coaches that are working for Cheshire are trained by me in strength and conditioning. So on every single one of our courses now, what we did was introduced a county-wide warm-up. We've basically made sure that every child who comes on a, a course does the same warm-up from every single level so that if they do make it into the county setup, they literally just go through the same kind of dynamic movements. 
Okay, so we're just going to move on now to trying to look at some of the movements that you really, really need to work on at home to make you a better cricketer. So we're going to look at each individual move and make sure that you're doing them really, really well. And I want you to think about where you might introduce them to your cricket. So we're just going to start off with a split squat. So again, the most important thing is that you've got a nice straight back. So put the bat down the back of your head. And what I want you to do is just take one step forward, a nice easy distance, back's nice and straight looking at me. And then I want you to just drop down into that split squat and straight back up to the same point. Down we go. Okay, so knees coming out over your second toe. Make sure that they don't come across the body and try to correct that knee from coming in. Good, much better. Get that balance right. Put your cricket bats really tall, as wide as you can. Arms straight, no bent arms. Okay, and you're gonna do five for me off each leg. So stepping in, back's nice and straight, just like that split squat, and bounce back out again. In we go, and bounce back out. That's really good. So make sure those knees are coming out over your second toes. Make sure that you don't just bow towards me. It's very good of you to bow, but we want to keep those hips nice and open, arms nice and straight. The kids perhaps don't understand why they're doing it, and therefore they just go through the motion. Certainly I never see warm-ups before a net session, certainly in club environments, and particularly if a kiddie rolls up to just come and play with his mates, there would never be any element of a warm-up, and I think that's massively important given the volumes they might actually bowl in the nets. I think from a club perspective, often it's a lack of knowledge. I think quite often we obviously are so grateful for the role that parents play in volunteering, but they perhaps haven't had the background. I see a lot of parents bringing adult strength and conditioning into uh, cricket and junior environments that perhaps aren't age specific and I think the other side is that quite often we'd probably find that coaches maybe get somebody to go and lead the warm-up whilst they're perhaps setting up writing out the team sheets or perhaps doing something else so I think it's trying to suggest to them that this is actually part of their coaching role and it's a great opportunity to actually work with the kids to develop them technically as well as physically. With the two bigger balls, we're going to get down into our squat position and you're going to see if you can explode and throw it up over your back. So you two work with that. What we're going to do with the smaller balls is, Ed, if you can go down into a lunge position for me, just make him some space. And what you're going to do is just push the ball down and back. See if you can hold that. Okay? Happy with that? Is you can do some slam downs. What you're going to do is actually just take the ball overhead and slam it and see how high you can make it bounce. The key element to me with the warm-up is that we cover the key areas of sort of strength, agility, the fitness, and certainly looking at some core drills. And how we do that is try and make it as cricket specific as we can. But the key thing is trying to engage the kids to say, we're going to do a lunge because of, you know, what part of that does that represent in cricket? When do you find it? And this is the reason why we're going to do it. And that tends to get the kids quite motivated, quite focused. So we're going to look at some key movements like squatting, like lunging, uh, certainly a lot of the balance drills ready for catching, bowling and batting. We're going to look at some fast feet work and then we'll hold some positions that will also help them with some core skills. Okay, so all hold the bat in the hand that you would normally run with. And what we're going to do first of all, just to get you running, just make sure we watch where we're going, is to run a one for me, touch into the crease and walk back. So go. Good, and just walk it back. Excellent. This time I want you to run a two. Make sure you touch down. Brilliant. This time for a bit of fun, sometimes we need to back pedal and back pedaling, backwards running, actually builds up your bottoms. Back you go. And forwards. Excellent. Okay, run a three, go. Push it on, we want those runs on the board. Excellent. Last one, we want to just put your bats down and you're going to do some sprint work, but then you're going to make sure you can stop. No point being able to run really, really fast to pick the ball up if you then can't stop, or if you're running a one and you take out the wickets and the keeper. So we want to know that as you run really, really fast, get into your catch position and go again. What you do is fall down into your low position, get ready and go again. Off you go, fast, stop. Brilliant, excellent, go. Okay, turn.
Excellent. Go again. Stop. Excellent. Really good. I think it's important for the extended warm-up to be done as a group to create that team spirit and to focus their minds on what they're going to be doing. It's massively important that each child practices it in between time so that they become fully conversant with a little routine that they can do. Often one of the drawbacks of cricket is that they obviously will do their warm-up and then they might not bat or bowl for an hour, hour and a half. So it's massively important that they take ownership of it and that they can do individually a small little version of it that they could do before they go out to bat and a small version that they can do on the field if they know that they're coming up for their bowling. So I think some of the drills they can take straight forward into pitch side or on the pitch to make sure that they're they're happy with it and we usually say try and do it about three times a week particularly the balance stuff so that they do see it as part of their fitness regime as well as just the warm-up